Hello, you are watching the news from Kazakhstan. I'm Marina Kim with the latest updates here at the top stories. Campaign for the collection of signatures for a referendum to extend presidential term is launched in Kazakhstan on the eve of New Year celebrations. Public fund Arrohak is holding an alternative opinion poll among this, the country's citizens. Food prices skyrocket in a number of countries' regions with the quickly approaching holiday season. The campaign to collect signatures in support of a referendum to extend President Nazarbayev's term to 2020 is launched in Kazakhstan. On Monday, the Central Elections Commission registered the initiative group from East Kazakhstan with the CSC chairman Kuandik Turgankulov, saying he received all appropriate documents on December 23rd, right on the day of the first meeting in Uskaminagorsk. The initiative is already supported officially by the country's parliament as well. President Nazarbayev has not yet announced his opinion publicly. However, it seems that the Central Elections Commission doesn't doubt his consent. On Monday, the CEC has presented the initiative group with a special certificate. A bit later, they promised to give out the questionnaires for collecting signatures, as according to the CEC, the decision to conduct the referendum doesn't violate the Constitution. The members of the CEC also see no violations of anyone's constitutional rights. The head of the CEC, Kwan Turgankulov, assured all journalists that the referendum initiative goes in line with the law. There are no violations of the law on referendum that we are guided by, which was confirmed by the General Prosecution Office. We also see no violations of constitutional norms. The main initiator of the referendum, the rector of the Semipalatinsk State University, Erlan Sidikov, was also present during the briefing and voiced his idea again. As it turns out, it is much cheaper to conduct a referendum instead of presidential elections. Moreover, the initiators will conduct signature collection on their expense in order not to distract the president's team from working on important issues and collect 200,000 signatures until January 10, 2011. The haste looks indeed strange. We are in the valley. We rented a conference hall and an office. All the expenses will be covered by the initiative group, as it includes some rich people. The opponents of the referendum initiative already call it a downfall of democracy. Several articles of the Constitution were completely ignored, including the clause about the president. More than a dozen of Astana residents and opposition representatives have conducted a funeral ceremony of idle articles of the Constitution. Today's thievish authorities will never conduct fair elections and the result of the referendum is known in advance. This is the constitution of Nazarbayev. There are so many implications and the constitution doesn't protect the interests of ordinary citizens. According to the opposition members, such political scenario contradicts to the OSCE norms, the organization chaired by Kazakhstan. The participants of the funeral ceremony appeal to the civil society to not let steal their rights for vote and boycott the referendum. However, all of the current actions face an impediment as the leader of the nation, Nazarbayev, is keeping silent. Meetings on referendum were held on Monday all across the country. People are asked to sign the petition to extend the term of the incumbent president by another 10 years. Members of the initiative group, whose numbers are growing each day, say there is no alternative to Nursultan Nazarbayev and he should done what he started. The Almaty branch of the ruling party, as well as the city mayor, say they will easily gather the necessary number of signatures despite tight deadlines. Activists in Uskaminagorsk claim they will be done even before the new year. Members of the initiative group in eastern Kazakhstan talked to the employees of the local heating plant continuously praising the head of state for half an hour. In the end, the workers embraced the idea and voted for a referendum. Now the initiative group plans to continue their promotion tour and visit other enterprises. We support this idea, there is no other way. Nazarbayev is in good condition, he is the one everyone should look up to. All of the initiative group members support the idea. In Karaganda, the referendum is promoted in educational institutions. Even before the official go from the CEC last Friday, local bureaucrats called a meeting of local education authorities. In the meantime, the collection of signatures in support of the referendum was hastily launched in Uskaminagorsk, the place where the whole idea originally came from. It seems that the key matter is to do everything before the end of the New Year holidays. We can collect this number of signatures even in weeks' time. We should not spend two to three weeks for that. It would be great if we'd be done until the end of the week and then just calmly celebrate the New Year. 
In Almaty, the interpretation of the necessity for the referendum sounded exactly the same as in regions, voiced traditionally by the members of the ruling party in Oratan. Almaty Mayor Ahmedjan Yesimov also supports the idea. This is not an easy task, but the initiative group members say they will complete it in record time before January 10th. The referendum idea is already supported by the MPs, well-known writers and artists. On Monday, Almaty residents also voted for the idea. In the capital, the Assembly of Peoples of Kazakhstan actively campaigned for the collection of signatures. The ethno-cultural associations and NGOs unanimously voted for the extension of President Nazarbayev's term until December 6, 2020. Activists say they need to collect at least 200,000 signatures. This will be done in different ways through various organizations or even door-to-door -door visits. There is already a person in every district who will be responsible for the task. We understand perfectly that there is no alternative to Sultan Nazarbayev. If he was a candidate, the nation would have voted for him. Members of the Social Democratic Party Azad were also present at the meeting of the Assembly. Their opinion was left unheard. Backstage activists spoke of the necessity of fair presidential elections 2012 and linked the referendum initiative with interest of financial and industrial groups surrounding the authorities. It appears the president is pushed by several financial groups. They see the head of state as a guarantor, never thinking about anyone else. They use their money to lobby ideas to guarantee their business until 2020. Despite the public opinion that the referendum on the extension of Nazarbayev's presidential term is rather the sign of Kazakhstan's political stagnation and not a guarantee of the political stability, as the matter is currently positioned by officials, the idea still made it to 2011 and the referendum will likely take place next spring. By Monday evening, students, members of a number of youth organizations and young businessmen from Astana also say they are ready to support the initiative on the extension of Nazarbayev's term to 2020. Representatives of youth organizations provided their explanation on why the leader of nation has to remain on the presidential position for another 10 years. They are confident that Nursultan Nazarbayev has all the necessary skills to continue representing Kazakhstan on the international arena. At the same time, young people have also expressed their worries about the absence of significant political figures who could correspond to the position of the president. Therefore, there is nothing left to do but to support the idea of the referendum. We already know cases when the MPs ask to empower them and promise to resolve all problems. There is no need to use these options. We have a leader that guided our country for 20 years in success and who intends to continue his path. Everything began on December 23rd during a meeting in Uskiminagorsk, which gathered people little known on the political field of the country, including the rector of Simei State University, Yerlan Sadikov. He was the first to forward the referendum idea. Observers, however, say it was all a part of the well-planned operation set up by the president's administration. Little-known professor, a rector of the Simei State University, Yerlan Sadikov, was the first to initiate the idea and supposedly toured a number of regions raising the issue of extending the term of the incumbent president by another 10 years. After founding support, he decided to announce the referendum at the meeting in Ustkaminagorsk. The Ustkaminagorsk scenario is painfully familiar, say experts recalling September 2009, when a little-known professor from Aktobia Zakredin Baidosov personally appealed to President Nazarbayev, asking him to remain in office for life. Should we hold elections? I don't think so. Mr. Nazarbayev, please remain the head of state. You always work for the benefit of the people. We should introduce appropriate amendments to the Constitution. Several weeks later, the deputy chairman of the ruling party in Uratan, Darhan Kalitaev, proposed to grant the president absolute power and make him the leader of nation. For a while, everyone forgot about this initiative, but only until summer when the law on the leader of nation was passed, and then later recognized by experts as the most negative political document of 2010. I believe there could be a proposal to pass a constitutional law on the leader of nation based on the law on the first president. This issue could be widely discussed and the law could more fully describe all all the powers and abilities of the incumbent head of state. Political scientist Dosim Satpaev questions public initiatives like this. He sees a direct connection to the president's administration. All of these developments currently observed in Kazakhstan are linked with the tightening of the presidential powers at any cost. After the law on the nation's leader was passed, the authorities didn't know what they should do next. Since the president was already the leader of the nation, there was no longer a necessity to be re-elected. The opinion of the analyst is shared by the radical performance artist Kanati 
Ibrahimov. He learned about the new initiatives through the internet and immediately posted It Happened in his blog. He, however, never expected the rest of the country to meet the news with complete ignorance. The initiative with the leader of the nation never led to much debate. There was no referendum, perhaps. This shows how the authorities disdain towards people who in turn do not respect themselves. Analysts believe it is easy to predict the next move of the president's administration. The situation with the law on the leader of nation will be repeated. President Nazarbayev will veto the referendum, but the law will still be enforced and the head of state will have to agree with the civil initiative and become the president for life. Members of the public fund Arruhak said on Monday they intend to organize an alternative referendum and launch the counter campaign collecting signatures against this Kuminagorsk initiative. Activists speak for the necessity of fair and free elections. This view is shared by members of the Social Democratic Party Azad. Six votes against the referendum in five minutes, 152 votes by the end of the day. The leader of the fund, Arruhak Bahadjan Turigozhina, campaigns for the collection of signatures against extending Nazarbayev's presidential term using the popular Kazakh blogging site UVision. The reasons are clear. President Nazarbayev remained in power for more than 20 years, living through four parliaments, seven governments and six prime ministers. We have to say our resounding no. Nazarbayev should not do just whatever he wants. The people have the opportunity to legitimately use the referendum, if it will take place, to come to the voting booths and say no. Respected film director Bulat Atabayev was one of the first people to sign the anti-referendum petition. The artist calls the developments in the country absurd and says the king is always played by his court. There are simply too many parties within the president's administration interested in the hasty pseudo-democratic move. The president's entourage is also afraid to lose power. They know that if they do, there will be big changes. This explains the haste and secrecy in the Last Supper situation. Leaders of the United but yet not registered Social Democratic Party Azad also speak against the referendum. Bolatabilov says the idea promptly closed his hopes for a better future. The politician sees the developments as a farce with everyone's forced involvement. Abilov believes it is time for the people to stop being just passive observers. This is a struggle between different clans, elites and oligarchs for the power and billions of dollars while we take a back set or play extras in this terrible play. I don't want that. The ruling party prepares for the collection of signatures with its regular zeal. Party members are confident the plebiscite is a mini-election with predetermined mass support. They already seek to collect 91% of the votes. The protests of youth and opposition are ignored, with citizens opposing the official view called a minor fraction of the population. I emphasize that this is the opinion of a small fraction of our society, and the majority of the population wants to see the president executing his powers fully. The polling of U-Vision shows 149 users supporting the referendum and 269 voting against it. The numbers disapprove the optimistic views of officials who report about absolute unanimity among citizens. Find out next what people in the streets of Almaty think about the possible extension of Nursultan Nazarbayev's term in the office. He is Kazakh, so let him stay until 2020. The best scenario would be like in Russia when Yeltsin was replaced by Putin. If someone like Putin would come to power, I would support that because Nazarbayev already finished his work. It will be um, good uh, because uh, right now uh, Kazakhstan is uh, the very different before 10 years ago and now uh, the be better than 10 years ago. Maybe in um, next 10 years it will be very well. I come and go while Nazarbayev is constantly in power. I cannot say anything. One person means a lot, and I think it is good that he remained in power. Because look, Georgia was in chaos while now it is a very beautiful country. One person resolved the problem, and now everything is in order. The same with Kazakhstan compared to all other countries. We have a great order and very beautiful country. I knock on wood. 
красивая страна. Кто не сглазить. Members of the Public Fund Perspective believe there is a necessity to purge the ranks of religious movements and NGOs. Participants of Monday's conference emphasized that it is Kazakhstan's excessive tolerance and adherence to OEC principles that hinder the country's efforts in eliminating all destructive sects. In addition, the fund employees say that inter international civil rights organizations like the Moscow's Helsinki Group or the OEC Human Rights Bureau actually hold back the struggle against the destructive associations. Kazakhstan is in need of cleanup from the so-called destructive organizations. This was stated in Almaty by the representatives of the public fund Perspektiva. According to them, sects are increasing in number because of excessive tolerance of Kazakh legislation and primarily to its correspondence to the OSCE principles. In support, they presented witnesses who have fallen victims from different sects. All the blame was put on the international human rights organizations. I mean those human rights organizations, primarily the Bureau on Democratic Institutions and Human Rights, when Evgeny Zhovtis headed that organization. When our fund opened, we appealed to international human rights organizations and the so-called Helsinki Committee. The worker of the Bureau on Human Rights, Andrei Sviridov, categorically disagrees with presented accusations and thinks that attacks of different funds on human rights defenders indicate a possible change of state ideology. It is clear who she is, the voluntary agent of the state and the regime. This also happens in non-government sector. They are called government-organized, non-government organizations. The same with political parties who are not directly Nuratan, but which are created as anti-clones of each opposition party to fight with them. The change of state priorities and the probable start of information campaign over the cleanup of non-government sector is explained simply by experts. On the eve of the referendum over the prolongation of presidential term, it is necessary for the state to clear the field from alternative opinions, while the proposal of the Fund Perspectiva over the toughening of the legislation best matches this scenario. The attempt of activists of the unregistered party Alga to collect signatures in support of their leader Vadimir Kozlov ended with the rest on Monday. We collect signatures every day and even the law enforcement officers are familiar with our faces and they know what we're doing. On Monday, the Noratan party office was overcrowded with state officials. During the day of signature collection, the closed session of the party's political council, chaired by the city mayor Ahmed Jan Isimov, was held inside the office. This might be why Faminich was able to collect only two signatures in support of the Alga leader Vladimir Kozlov, who, according to Alga members, was unjustly accused of tax evasion. The police patrol detained Faminich and took her to the police station for identification and released her in an hour. In my presence, they called to all other police stations, asking whether they have anything on me. They were surprised to hear that I am clear and released me. Sixteen employees of the company CNPC Aktabe Munayagas in the Aktabe region plan to sue the current leadership. Apparently, the workers lost their social benefits and lunch perks for dropping their memberships in the local trade union. The employees say that in reality the union does nothing to protect the rights of oil field workers while retaining 2% of their salaries. Moreover, the medical allowances, holiday vouchers for children and sanatorium treatments were deducted from the salaries. Frustrated oil workers think that a strong trade union must take part in labor disputes, which are very frequent at this enterprise. The activists of the independent trade union Narazilik were fired in May of this year for participating in unsanctioned protest action. At the moment, our chair and the lawyer are in the city. They might be visiting the union, the prosecution office and the mayor. If this issue will be resolved, we will gather even more people as many were intimidated. They again wrote an appeal to the trade union. A number of countries' regions experiences price frenzy. The spike is especially obvious in Astana, where the cost of several products jumped by almost one and a half times over the weekend. The leadership of the Competition Protection Agency, which said there will be no price growth during the holidays, now says otherwise. As was explained by the deputy chair of the Competition Protection Agency, Boris Parsegov, the authorities are currently dealing with the settling of prices on the spots. Entrepreneurs who illegally increase prices for goods will be penalized. 
Barcega refutes the prices collusion and says that the jump in prices is temporary. Moreover, the Competition Protection Agency calls to strengthen the work of regional headquarters on stabilizing prices on goods, especially for meat and dairy products and create necessary stocks. In order to decrease the prices, the regions are conducting food fairs where the prices are lowered by up to 20%. Indeed, the inspection showed that some markets in Astana have increased prices for goods. The buyers have refused from buying goods from them and now we're dealing with suppliers. At five, we're going to have a special session in the city administration over this issue. This is it for now. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow for more. Goodbye.